Your Excellencies, very senior officers, distinguished invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. We will now have the honor and privilege of listening to the address of the reviewing officer, His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, Grand Commander of the Federal Republic, President, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria. May I humbly request the Commandant, Nigerian Defense Academy, to please invite the reviewing officer for his address, the Commandant, sir. President of the Senate, Executive Governors of Kaduna and Niger States, Chairman, Senate House Committee on Defense, and other members of the National Assembly, Honorable Ministers of Defense and Agriculture, Chief of Defense Staff, Service Chiefs, and Inspector General of Police, Commandant Nigerian Defense Academy, Heads of security agencies, invited guests, gentlemen cadets, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Let me begin by thanking the commandant, staff and instructors, and gentlemen officer cadets for an outstanding parade this morning. Congratulations to you all and well done. I came here today bearing the burden of a nation that counts on your valor and to celebrate your willingness to offer yourselves to serve your beloved country. This honor to serve as the reviewing officer of the Person Hour Parade of 69's regular course of the Nigerian Defense Academy would be my last as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> what sets this academy apart is not just the primacy of discipline, but its first-class training curricula designed to transform young cadets into professionals with extraordinary skill set and knowledge to prevent, confront, and neutralize the contemporary and the emerging threats facing our country and West African sub-region. I am aware that you are perhaps the most highly trained cause since the establishment of this academy in 1964. Having completed our most methodical, corporeal, and academic training in line with the new capacity building philosophy of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, you emerge in an era of expanding global security threats in the first seven years we have set aside high-tech platforms and prioritized your needs to facilitate your training and commissioning. When this government came in 2015, we inherited a country at crossroads with bombs going off with frightening frequency even in our cities. And we came in <coughs> Excuse me. To manage the crisis, this administration has since coming on board procured over 550 naval platforms, out of which 319 have been delivered as part of the aggressive fleet 
recapitalization of the Nigerian Navy. We have also increased the number of Nigerian Air Force platforms by more than 38% and enhanced the serviceability rate of aircraft in the Nigerian Air Force inventory by over 70%. In pursuing this same objective, the Nigerian Army has received more than 2,000 units of various armored fighting vehicles, guns, and equipment. These are in addition to improved funding of the three services along with other security and intelligence agencies. These comprehensive and systematic acquisitions within seven years are not only unprecedented in the first 38 years, but they are also aligned with our pledge to safeguard and strengthen the security architecture of our country. Although this is not a forum to introduce you to military hardware, you are stepping out to inherit. It is imperative to identify the magnitude and complex states of conflicts surrounding us, while acknowledging that our measures have yielded results and we remain ever grateful for the sacrifices of members of the armed forces, we must brace up for the dimensions this conflict has taken. In our bid to fulfill our promise to neutralize Boko Haram, terrorism in the Northeast, which has spread to other neighboring countries, when we look over, the armed forces liberated areas occupied by the terrorists and gave the residents a new lease of life and our commitment to resettling and rehabilitating the victims of the tragedy has been unwavering. I want to seize this opportunity to appeal to Nigerians that although we have recorded success in the conflict inherited, especially in the Northeast, the security challenges in the country have evolved and assumed other dimensions in some areas. We have devised both military and non-military methods to intervene and even rolled out an amnesty program to rehabilitate repentant terrorists who surrendered and laid down their arms unconditionally. Let me also commend our military for both kinetic and non-kinetic approaches they adopt in tackling some of our security challenges. Just yesterday, relief came for our country as the remaining 23 victims of the March 28th Abuja Kaduna train attack were released by the heinous terrorists This feat was not achieved without our military. As the interventionist chief of defense staff action committee, set up by General Leo Erabo, was at the center of the development, along with sister security agencies. I say bravo to our soldiers, officers, and gentlemen. Our tasks as the guardians of the nation are to prepare for the evolving and complex security situations and make sure that no terrorists can threaten Nigeria's sovereignty and integrity. In this regard, I have instructed the service chiefs to replicate the successes in the Northeast in other parts of the country. And I call on all Nigerians to continue to support our armed forces and security agencies. This administration has invested heavily in infrastructure with our rail, roads, seaports, airports, and for our sector, revitalized 
through strategic rehabilitation and reconstruction. The same template has been applied in tackling the challenges in the housing, water resources, and health sectors, and unsurprisingly, the first targets of attacks by terrorists are our thriving infrastructure, which was intended to make life easier for Nigerians, such as roads, railways, and power installations. The necessity to protect these key national infrastructure from being vandalized and stay ahead of the enemies of the state inspires our resolute to utilize executive orders to promote good governance. Furthermore, we have been allocating vast resources to support millions of farmers, traders, and entrepreneurs through interventions like Anchor Borrowers Program, the Prudential Fertilizer Initiative, and Social Agro-Industrial Processing Zones. These have made our national social investment program the largest of such programs in Africa. The Presidential and Evelyn Business Environment Council, which we established in 2016 to drive cross-sectoral reforms to eliminate critical bottlenecks and bureaucratic constraints to doing business in Nigeria, and that the country moved 39 places up the World Bank ease of doing business, ranking from 170 to 131 under our watch in a testimony to these interventions and reforms. You must remember that the goal of the terrorists and insurgents is to destroy our reforms. U.S. is to safeguard economic and military capability of the nation. Our interventions, and even where we dealt with several tours, were designed to prevent the collapse of the economy and revitalize the armed forces. And this is the legacy we are handing over to the next administration. This is an important point we must acknowledge, especially as the election year draws closer. I am utterly committed to ensuring that the forthcoming elections are peaceful and transparent. And it is our collective responsibility to continue to work towards building a united and prosperous country. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, permit me now to turn my attention to our graduating cadets, the heroes keenly awaited by the entire nation. Gentlemen cadets, I congratulate you once again and on this most memorable day of your lives. Your journey and career as officers in the armed forces of Nigeria begins today. There is no better time to prove your valor and demonstrate the virtues upon which the academy was founded in the defense of your fatherland. And I must, and I trust you to do so with uncompromising dignity and honor. Your convergence here symbolizes our national unity, for you are all admitted into the academy from the 36 states of the Federation and the Federal Capital Territory to coexist and master the arts and science of building and defending your fatherland. You are required to replicate the social cohesion you experience during your time at the academy and be 
the unified and incorruptible models of those you are trained to protect and bound by esprit de corps and love for your fatherland. I would like to facilitate with the families and friends of the cadets passing out today. Without your support, it would have been more difficult for these cadets to complete their fairly and in adjusting to the dictates of this institution. May I request you to continue to support them throughout their careers. As men and women who may frequently be away from their families, sometimes for a long time, they need your prayers, love, and emotional support to encourage them to do their best in the service of the nation. I now want to once again commend and congratulate the commandant, staff, and instructors of the academy for an excellent parade, and more, important, more importantly, for the recent overhaul of training curricula and methodologies in line with the dynamics of the contemporary operational requirements. Congratulations to the graduating cadets and congratulations to the Nigerian Defense Academy. Thank you and God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria.